Hello everyone. Welcome to our YouTube channel. We are back with a new video. If you like our content, please like the video and do share it. So let us start with the first news. The Nepal's cable TV operators have banned or we can say switched off the signals for all the Indian news channels except Doordarshan. This was reported by the ANI on July 9, 2020. Earlier on that day the spokesperson of Nepal Communist Party Narayan Kazi Shrestha has accused Indian news channel of broadcasting defamatory shows against the Nepal Prime Minister K P Oli As per the media reports from Nepal the decision to ban the broadcasting of all the Indian news channel by Nepal was taken after One of the Indian news channels had broadcasted a show in which the Nepalese Prime Minister K P Oli was linked with the Chinese ambassador to Nepal Hao Yangi. This move by Nepal also comes when there are tensions going on between India and Nepal regarding the border dispute. Last month the Nepal had passed a bill which claimed some of the territories of india like kalapani lipu lake and limpiadura the bill including these territories in the nepal's map was also approved by the nepal's president and now they have banned the broadcasting of the indian news channels The operation Samudra Setu which was launched by the Indian Navy on May 5th has been completed now. The operation was started as a part of national effort to bring back the Indian citizens which are overseas at the time when the corona virus had hit the whole world. The operation Samudra Setu lasted for over 55 days. in which 3992 indian citizens were brought back to their homeland by the sea route the naval ships which had participated in this operation samudra setu are ins jalashwa and there are three landing ship tanks that is ins erawat ins shardul and ins magar These four Indian ships streamed more than 23000 kilometers to bring back the Indian citizens during the pandemic from the countries like Maldives, Sri Lanka, in Iran, UAE, etc. The first evacuation operation started with evacuating 700 Indian citizens from the capital city of Maldives while the same Indian Navy ship INS Jalashwa made the last evacuation drive in which 687 Indian citizens were brought back to India from Iran's Bandarabas port recently the Ministry of Home Affairs on Thursday permitted the National Investigation Agency NIA to investigate the Kerala gold smuggling case as around 30 kg of gold was seized from a diplomatic cargo on the Kerala International Airport so what happened at the airport during the seizure of gold the gold 30 kg of gold had arrived in the diplomatic cargo which is estimated to be of rupees 15 crore worth the diplomatic cargo are not subjected to routine custom examinations and the cargo was listed as the bathroom fitting noodles and the cargo containing biscuits items and etc but the customs department had an advance inputs about the gold which had arrived at the airport so following a doubt the diplomatic cargo was searched 
and the gold 30 kg of gold was recovered from a diplomatic cargo the gold seized was meant for the consulate of united arab emirates which was located in the kerala's capital city thiruvananthapuram and the main accused behind this is identified as a woman named swapna suresh swapna suresh is a former employee of uae consulate talking about her history she was born in abu dhabi later on she shifted to thiruvananthapuram with her daughter and worked in a travel agency for 2 years she then got a job at air india states in 2013 and in 2016 she again returned to abu dhabi to work as a secretary of the consulate general in united arab emirates last year swapna suresh left her job but the police sources say that she was expelled because of her irregularities swapna suresh is not located till now and she has filed for an anticipatory bail in the kerala high court online so the nia is searching for all those who are accused in this gold smuggling case in kerala moving on towards a news related to the united arab emirates recently the united arab emirates had expressed the interest to have an open sky agreement policy with india so what is an open sky agreement the open sky agreements are bilateral agreements between two countries that the two countries will negotiate to provide rights for the airlines to offer international passenger flights as well as cargo flights the open sky agreement will allow india and uae to have unlimited number of flights to the selected cities of each other's country india currently has an air service agreement with uae and other 109 countries but this does not allow unlimited number of flights between two countries currently about 1068 flights are operated in a week between india and united arab emirates talking about india's open sky policy with other nations according to the national civil aviation policy 2016 the policy allows the government to enter into an open sky air service agreement on a reciprocal basis with the sark nations as well as countries beyond a 5000 km radius from new delhi india currently has open sky agreements with greece jamaica guyana finland us japan etc besides showing interest in an open sky agreement uae also mentioned that it does not intend to implement the fifth and sixth freedoms of air so what this freedoms of air mean the international air travel is governed by various freedoms of air the first freedom of air allows a carrier to take off from its home state the basic one the second freedom of air allows it to land in a second country the third and fourth freedoms of air allow the airline to take off from the country it had landed and come back to land at its home country this four freedom of air are agreed upon now but the fifth and sixth freedom allows the airlines to carry passengers picked from one country and fly them to a third country 
rather than the country from which the airline originated that means the passengers of third country other than uae and india so let us wait for an official response from the indian side moreover this will also help india to become a major commercial hub in future moving on towards our last update recently the maldives and sri lanka both nation became first two countries in the south east asian region of the world health organization which has eliminated both measles and rubella disease both these disease are viral infection disease and are mostly common among young children and adults rubella infection is also common among pregnant women which may cause the death of the child or may cause irreversible birth defects so these both countries sri lanka and maldives have eradicated these diseases from their country by providing vaccination of measles and rubella to almost everyone in the country a country is verified as having eliminated measles and rubella when there is no evidence of this endemic transmission for over 3 years in presence of a well performing surveillance system Maldives reported its last case of missiles in 2009 and a case of rubella in October 2015 Moreover Sri Lanka reported its last case of missiles in May 2016 and of rubella in March 2017 Talking about India's condition on these two diseases Despite the availability of a safe and effective vaccine since 1960 both these diseases have been a major public health concern in India around 50000 infected children die due to measles every year in India which accounts to 36% of the global figures in measles and due to the rubella infection Around 40,000 children annually in India are born with some kind of birth defects. So, India is also trying to reduce the number of cases in missiles and rubella annually with initiatives like Universal Immunization Program, Mission Indra Dhanush, Vaccination Program, etc. So, this is it for today. If you like this video subscribe to our channel to get the regular updates from our channel